This video will go over the basics of making a sequence diagram in UML. If you're not familiar with UML quite yet, check out our Basics of UML video by clicking the info button in the upper right. We'll be completing this tutorial in Gliffy, which is a diagramming tool available in Confluence, Jira, and online. To follow along, you can sign up for a free trial of Gliffy Online and get started in just a few minutes. The link to that free trial is also in that info panel in the upper right. Now, let's get into the tutorial. A sequence diagram shows how objects or classes interact with each other over time. So if you need to show how elements interact with one another, a UML sequence diagram will do the trick. First, let's open a new diagram and select UML ERD from the Create a New Diagram panel. That's right here. This preloads UML shapes, including the standard notations for sequence diagrams. You'll find those shapes in the left side panel here. So for our tutorial, we're going to make a simple sequence diagram showing you calling your best friend. First, we have to ask ourselves what parts are included in this system. So in this case, you'll have you, the caller, a phone system, and the recipient, your best friend. We can represent those three things by dragging and dropping in three lifeline symbols, and then labeling them. Lifeline symbols are labeled vertical lines that show who or what is receiving interactions in this system sequence. So we'll go ahead and give these labels. Now, these vertical lines represent the object as time passes, with further down the line being later in time. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out these lines so that we have room to draw our sequence diagram on top of them. Next, we're going to work from top to bottom and left to right to show how these things interact with each other or the messages that they send. So we'll draw an arrow for the first message in this system by just dragging and dropping it. And we can adjust the endpoints so that they go over each lifeline. And this first message is going to be you picking up the phone. Type to label that arrow right away. Now, before we do anything else, the phone tells us that it's ready for us by giving us a dial tone. That's called a return message which is just a little verification that the system's doing its work. So we'll drag a return message, which is represented by a dashed arrow, back from the phone to you, the caller. And right away, we can type to label this one dial tone. I'm going to move it up here right under this other one. Great. Now, once you hear that dial tone, you know you can dial. So we'll add another message arrow beneath the dial tone return message arrow. Type to label it dial. And when you've dialed, your friend's end of the line will ring as well. So we'll draw in one more arrow all the way from the phone to your friend's lifeline showing the phone rings. I'm going to use a quick shortcut here. You select the arrow, hit Command D, and it immediately duplicates this one so that I can drag it over and type to rename it phone rings. While the phone's ringing, you hear that ringing as well, which is another return message confirming to you that the system's working. So I'm going to add in that and label it ringing sound effect. All right, so let's think through what happens next in this system. Your best friend is either going to answer the phone or not. For the sake of this tutorial, we're going to leave voicemail out of the picture and just say that the call would drop if your friend doesn't pick up. To show these two potential outcomes, we're going to use what's called an alternative frame, which is this box right here. Drag and drop it over our lifelines. And this shows what would happen if the call is answered, call answered, or if else, if they don't pick up the phone, what happens then? So this gives us the opportunity to draw each of those scenarios out. First, I don't know exactly how you greet each other. Let's assume you'll be polite and say hello. Your friend picks up the phone and says hello. That'll go from your friend's phone through the phone system all the way back to you. So I'm going to command D to use that duplicate shortcut and draw in that arrow all the way back to you. Now, 
if they don't pick up the phone, we're going to draw into the else part of this frame that there'd be a notification from their line through the phone system, call not answered. And then on your end of the line, you would just hear a click that the call dropped. Click. And that's the system. So now that we've mapped out these messages, the last step is to add activation boxes. This shows you when objects in your system are active and when they're not doing anything. These skinny vertical rectangles allow you to see at a glance when each part of your system is in use. We'll draw on these activation boxes to show that the caller is involved the whole time, as well as the phone system. And then your friend's end of the line isn't involved the whole time. So we'll make this box a little bit shorter. Great. Last, we're going to clean up our arrows. So what you'll do to make this adjustment is you'll click on each of the message arrows that you drew and adjust those endpoints so that they connect to the activation boxes. You'll know it's anchored correctly when that green circle appears around your cursor. That's telling you that it's connected to that point of the box. So we're going to go ahead and finish cleaning all these guys up. All right, there we go. And that's all it takes to make a sequence diagram. Keep in mind, this is a very basic example of a sequence diagram. Some can reference specific pieces of code or even use pseudocode. Gliffy has the additional shapes to follow the correct sequence diagram notation if you are ready to build something more complex. You'll just drag and drop each piece in just like I did for this tutorial.